On a clear December night, ASCAP Radio Telescope in Western Australia noticed something extraordinary, a regular bursts of radio waves coming from a spot in the sky until that moment had been considered unremarkable. These bursts lasted for about two minutes each time and repeated with perfect regularity every 44 minutes. Most radio sources in the sky either emit continuously or flicker rapidly, but this one seemed to behave like a cosmic lighthouse with an incredibly slow and steady pulse. The object was quickly cataloged as ASCAP j 1832 i but for many scientists it soon became simply ASCAP J1832. What made it so intriguing was not just that it pulsed in radio waves, but that it did so over tens of minutes, a dramatically longer cycle than any known pulsar or repeating radio source. ASCAP, the Australian Square Kilometre Array Pathfinder, has a uniquely wide field of view, allowing it to scan vast swaths of sky at once. On that night, it revealed ASCAP J1832 pulsing like clockwork, and the discovery team wondered what could possibly drive such a slow and powerful beacon. Radio telescopes had spotted similar phenomena before, but those long-period transients had never been seen emitting any other kind of energy. The truly surprising twist came when researchers realized that NASA's Chandra X-ray Observatory had been observing the same part of the sky at exactly the same time. It seemed almost too good to be true. While ASCAP was tracing radio flashes, Chandra's X-ray instruments were recording data that showed pulses perfectly synchronized with those radio bursts. This was the first time a long-period transient had been observed in X-rays, as well as radio, and it immediately opened up a wealth of new questions about the nature of these strange objects. Astronomers had known about pulsars, rapidly spinning neutron stars for decades. Pulsars brighten and dim in radio waves many times per second as their intense magnetic fields sweep beams of radiation across Earth. But ASCOP J1832's 44-minute cycle was thousands of times longer than a typical pulsar's few millisecond or few second rotation period. It did not fit into any category of compact object that science had cataloged. When Chandra data confirmed that the object also flashed in X-rays every 44 minutes, it became clear that whatever powers these bursts must involve extreme physical processes. X-rays require a lot more energy to produce than radio waves, so scientists knew they were looking at an environment with powerful magnetic fields, intense gravity, or possibly both. Students smiled when they heard about the race to understand this cosmic mystery. It wasn't that the science was simple, but the story had a kind of detective drama to it. Two very different telescopes one on the ground and one in space, combining their clues to reveal something no single instrument could see on its own. ASCAP had given the initial clue by detecting radio pulses, but it was only when Chandra's detailed X-ray images were compared that scientists realized they had stumbled upon something entirely new. The odds of Chandra watching the exact patch of sky at the same moment ASCAP spotted the radio beacon were minuscule. Yet here it was, a perfect intersection of opportunity and cosmic happenstance that offered researchers a rare glimpse into a hidden corner of the universe. The discovery team first presented their findings by showing how ASCAP J1832 sat against the backdrop of a supernova remnant, a huge wispy ring of gas left behind when a star exploded long ago. Supernova remnants often harbor neutron stars, the dense cores of those exploded stars, but in this case, the astronomers determined that the apparent proximity was likely just a coincidence. They mapped the object's position with such precision that they could say the remnant and ASCAP J1832 were not physically connected. Still, the image was striking. Radio data displayed in red, X-ray spots in bright blue, all set against infrared colors from NASA's Spitzer telescope showing interstellar gas clouds nearby. It was a cosmic collage that hinted at the many layers of information scientists needed to untangle to understand what ASCAP J1832 truly was. Once the X-ray signal was confirmed, researchers faced the challenge of explaining why a long-period radio transient like ASCAP J1832 could also glow in X-rays. Some thought it might be a slowly spinning neutron star with an extraordinarily powerful magnetic field, a magnetar, in other words, 
that was more than half a million years old. Magnetars are known for strong magnetic fields, a thousand times stronger than typical neutron stars, capable of twisting and snapping field lines and explosive flares that emit X-rays and gamma rays. But theory suggested an object as old as half a million years should have a dimmer, more stable output rather than the bright and erratic radio waves seen from AXAP J18032. Likewise, the object's X-ray brightness and variability didn't line up neatly with any known magnetar behavior. Magnetars normally show X-ray changes on timescales from seconds to days, not a steady pulse every 44 minutes. So while a magnetar could not be ruled out completely, it seemed the explanation might be more exotic. Another idea explored by the research team was that AXAP J18032 might be part of a binary system, where a neutron star pulls material from a companion star, forming a swirling disk of gas that also emits X-rays. Many X-ray binaries do exist, but they generally have shorter, more chaotic cycles of emission, not the immaculate 44-minute clockwork seen here. The intensity of the radio pulses was also far higher than what typical X-ray binaries produce. In fact, the research team argued that if AXAP J18032 were simply a neutron star in a binary pair, its radio and X-ray outputs should look different, more like well-documented X-ray binaries such as Cygnus X1 or Scorpius X1. Those objects show bright X-rays when the neutron star actively accretes matter but they don't behave like precise periodic radio beacons. AXAP j 18032 signals were too regular and too intense to match those patterns. Faced with these discrepancies, scientists turned their attention to another class of compact object, white dwarfs. White dwarfs are the leftover cores of stars that were not massive enough to go supernova, and although they are dense, they are significantly less compact and less exotic than neutron stars. Isolated white dwarfs normally cool over billions of years, shining steadily in optical and ultraviolet light, but rarely in radio or X-rays. However, if a white dwarf has a companion star, matter can stream onto it, potentially heating its magnetic poles and producing higher energy emissions. Some highly magnetized white dwarfs, known as intermediate polars or polars, emit pulsed radiation as they spin. But even the strongest magnetic white dwarfs known in our galaxy had never shown anything like ASCAP J1832's intensity or periodicity. To account for ASCAP J1832's behavior, the white dwarf would need a magnetic field stronger than any measured so far, and it would need conditions that allowed it to produce both bright radio bursts and X-ray pulses on a 44-minute cycle. While this scenario cannot be ruled out entirely, it stretches the boundaries of what astronomers currently believe a white dwarf can do. Adding to the mystery, ASCAP J1832's brightness in both radio and X-rays gradually dropped off dramatically over six months of monitoring. When ASCAP observed the object at different times over half a year, the radio pulses weakened until they were almost gone. Likewise, X-ray observations by Chandra showed a similar fade. Such long-term variability is not typical for pulsars or magnetars, which tend to be relatively stable over months to years, unless they undergo a sudden event such as a flare or glitch. But ASCAP J1832 seemed to be living through a slow decline phase, as if it were powering down or accreting less matter. This dual change in both radio and X-rays indicated that whatever engine powered the pulses was evolving on timescales of months, adding yet another layer of complexity to the puzzle. The class of objects known as long-period radio transients LPTs, only came to light in 2022 when researchers first reported a source that pulsed every 18 minutes. At that time, astronomers realized that they had uncovered a new category of radio objects whose cycles lasted from a few minutes to a few hours, far beyond the millisecond to second periods of pulsars. Since the initial discovery, about 10 more LPTs have been found, each with its own unique rhythm but none had been observed in any wavelength other than radio until ASCAP J1832 showed its X-ray signal. Before this breakthrough, scientists could only guess that LPTs might involve neutron stars with unusual magnetic or rotational properties. The X-rays from ASCAP J1832 forced them to rethink these assumptions, since any valid theory now had to explain why the object could produce coherent radio beams and also generate high-energy X-ray flashes in lockstep. As the team analyzed data from ASCAP, 
Chandra, and other telescopes like LOFAR and Meerkat, they started to build a more complete picture of ASCAP J1832's 2032s neighborhood. In composite images combining radio, X-ray, and infrared data, the object appeared as a bright spot with a faint halo or spikes set against a colorful backdrop of interstellar gas clouds. Infrared observations from NASA's Spitzer Space Telescope revealed patches of gas and dust that showed up as green, teal, and golden-orange structures around the object. The supernova remnant, a large hazy red ring in those images, looked like a cosmic halo in which ASCAP J1832 was nestled, although again, the team was convinced the two were not physically connected. By removing the infrared layer from the image, researchers gained a clearer view. The object took on a bright white dot with a subtle purplish edge in X-rays, and three faint spikes emanated from its surface in radio. It was almost like discovering a cryptic alien design etched onto the sky. After months of detailed analysis, the research team led by Dr. Ziting Wang of Curtin University published their paper in the journal Nature. They had laid out all the observational facts, ASCAP's radio pulses, Chandra's synchronized X-ray flashes, the gradual six-month fade, the surrounding field, and the fact that none of the conventional explanations fit neatly. Almost simultaneously, another group led by D. Lee from Tsinghua University also reported their independent discovery of ASCAP J1832 using the Daocheng Radio Telescope, although their paper submitted to the ARXIV on the same day did not include X-ray findings. Together, these teams highlighted how rapidly the astronomy community was mobilizing to understand this strange new member of the cosmic zoo. In describing the possible nature of ASCAP J1832, scientists had to balance several competing theories. If it were a magnetar, its age would have to be more than 500,000 years, and yet its radio luminosity would be far higher than any magnetar of that age had ever shown. Magnetars are born spinning rapidly, but their rotation slows down over tens of thousands of years as they lose energy through intense magnetic fields. By half a million years, most magnetars are quiet and dim, yet ASCAP J1832 blazed with pulses in both radio and X-rays. On the other hand, if it were a white dwarf binary, the companion star's material would have to stream onto the white dwarf in just the right way to produce bright radio bursts and X-ray emissions every 44 minutes. This scenario would imply a magnetic field on the white dwarf far stronger than anything previously measured. Some white dwarfs do have magnetic fields of up to a billion gauss, but modeling suggested that to power ASCAP J1832 signals, the field might need to approach or exceed 10 billion gauss. Stars with such fields exist in theory, but none had been observed to act like this. A tantalizing thought was that ASCAP J1832 might represent an entirely new type of object or a new evolutionary stage of a compact star. Perhaps it was a neutron star that had once been a magnetar, but had slowed down and changed its magnetic configuration, acquiring a peculiar twisting pattern that caused the radio and X-ray pulses. Or maybe it was a white dwarf that had not yet been recognized as such. In the process of accreting matter so slowly and steadily that its pulses were unusually long. Another exotic idea was that the object could be a quark star, a hypothetical remnant even denser than a neutron star, composed of free quarks instead of neutrons. Quark stars remain theoretical, but some astrophysicists propose they might exhibit strange magnetic and emission properties. If ASCAP J1832 were a quark star, it would represent a landmark discovery, proof that such exotic matter exists in the universe. However, at present, there is no direct evidence that quark stars are real, so the notion remains highly speculative. Beyond its physical nature, ASCAP J1832 offered a blueprint for finding more of its kind. Prior to this discovery, astronomers searching for LPTs relied solely on radio surveys that monitored large areas of sky for intermittent bursts.